Okay, I promised but hadn't covered yet the 50 um, in verses 5 and 6a. It has a special meaning in the Mosaic Law and because this is metered text, it means we're supposed to pay attention to it, to, you know, to the doctrinal meaning. Meter always has a doctrinal meaning, but not all numbers are meter numbers. Okay, here, there's such something of a play on the fact that Christ is 33 when he talks. And, you know, this is like saying you're short because you're looking at a false Christ and you're wandering. Okay, I already covered that. There's no particular not, you know, meaning to 18 that I know of. It's a trinity meter, but I haven't figured out what it is. It's three sixes. You know, it's playing something on man, man because six is the number of man in the Bible, doctrinal meaning. But I don't understand why this is being troubled. So I can't explain it, except to maybe say that, you know, trinity agrees to the fact that the wars are occurring. But it is extremely significant, th this business about 32 plus 18, and then 50 plus 7, and especially 57 plus 13 equals 70. All right. Now, the thing is, in Paul's text, all right, we'd only gotten to the, how Paul is tracking through here, which is 134 AD, 133, depending on the fiscal, and, we had st and it stops here. Okay, at the first clause in verse 6 of Ephesians 1, 1 through 6, 1, 1, 6. Okay, there's, an, I can't like tell immediately if he's trying, if he's playing on the 50. We're going to get to what Paul is playing on here because it's very important. But even if I bring this down, let's see if I can bring it down. Okay. 50 is not divisible by 7. 50 is this very significant number in the Mosaic Law. But it's not divisible by 7. However, if you took 21 and 28, so he is paying attention to it. 21 and 28, of course, is 49. So by the time you get to 133, all right, which is the equivalent of being here and then here, the 50 is taken into account and you're adding another 7. And of course, he's using 14 here to go past the 7 afterwards, but it's kind of like, well, why is he leaving out the 7 here? See, you got 50 here and 57 here. But Paul's playing, by the time you get here, you got a 28. You previously had a 21, so you could sort of unite them together, you know, conceptually and say, okay, well, that's a 49, which is close to 50. What's the big deal about that? Okay, because there are so many mistakes with the math in Christendom, I guess when you get your degree in seminary or whatever, they're not allowing you to actually be competent in math because, pr quite frankly, the reasons why we have so many math disputes about Bible dates is primarily because everybody's calculating the dates wrong. I've looked at so many timelines that are out there on the internet and in books and stuff like that, and they're all screwball. And they were always screwball. They were screwball back, you know, in the second century. They were screwball in the time of Josephus. Josephus's numbers are almost always wrong. Okay, and nobody bothers to fix it. Well, one of the reasons they don't bother to fix it is they don't know how. All right? You kind of have to know a lot about the Mosaic Law and you have to know how God uses his dates in the Bible in order to get that right and nobody pays enough attention to know how and I wouldn't have either except that I do it for a living okay so look 50 you've heard that before Pentecost 50 days well in the Mosaic Law there's also Jubilee 50 years okay now, what is not known in Christendom about this, and used to be known in Judaism, but it's kind of garbled now, is that Christ was scheduled to die when he was 40 years old, at which point there were supposed to be, originally, there were supposed to be 54 more years left until the millennium began. And the reason for that was that Moses had supermatured, not Moses, Abraham, had supermatured. 54 years prior to the um, 2100 
allotted to the Gentiles. The Jews think it's 2,000 today, but the correct number is 1050 plus 1050 equals 2100. The last 50 years of that was supposed to be a special time for um, harvesting the Gentiles, is what they call it in, the, in Jewish culture. Harvesting the Gentiles. The idea that you got a thousand years, and then in the last 50 years, those who haven't yet believed in Adonai Elohein, Adonai Echad, would get a special chance to do that before the millennium would begin. Okay? So that 50 represents this. And it's characterized, it's always characterized in the Old Testament as being full of war. So by, you know, linking 32 and 18 to get 50, even though it's not a seven figure, it's, a, it's an important doctrinal figure. Okay? They call it Jubilee in the Mosaic Law. And Jubilee, the first meaning of Jubilee always was the ultimate, the last, the final 50 years of history during which there'd be a whole lot of wars. Then Christ would come and deliver Israel. Israel would be queen of the nations for a thousand years. Okay, that's always been in the law. And in fact, one of the reasons why Israel gets her calendar so screwed up now and why our calendars are so screwed up now and our timings of the Bible is that there's something that's totally gross and stupid and wrong called the Book of Jubilees where they account time in 50s and they don't even do it right. I mean, you know, the person who wrote that thing must have been drunk. Okay? God doesn't account time in 50s. He accounts time in 70s. Or sevens, actually. And, you know, we call it weeks, but sevens is a prop, is really a better name. And so you have 490 plus 70 plus 490 equals 1050. And then the flip side of it for unbelievers and just civilization in general, because it's not promised time for them, They're, they believe or they don't within the allotted time, is 1000 plus 50. And that last 50 is an extensive evangelization period, and it's easier to believe in God when you got a bunch of wars going on. All right? So that's why Christ is metering it like this, or Matthew is. You know, I don't, I'm not sure yet if the text is saying that Christ is giving an uninterrupted discourse that's being, you know, just recorded verbatim, or whether Matthew is packaging the words. Because, you know, he'd give the same message over and over. All right? But the point is the doctrinal significance of this is 50 because the characterization of the last 50 years was supposed to be wars and rumors of wars. So he is not just talking about war, all right, in this passage. This is real important. This is how you, one way you know that the meter informs the text. He's not just talking about any old wars and wars and wars. He's talking about signifying the end times. The final 50 years is going to be characterized by wars. The whole of Matthew 24, everybody knows, is about the end times. But some people, when they look at this because they don't care about scripture, they just say, oh, well, it's just any period of wars. No, it's specifically the last 50 years of wars. Now, the next tip that you got to prove that that's true is the seven because that's the tribulation. Israel was always supposed to have one. Church got inserted to slow it down to, you know, insert it because Israel rejected Christ too early so that Tribulation 7 couldn't play. It was conditioned on him dying at the right time. It didn't go away. It just, it gets delayed until church gets completed. Okay, and that's Matthew 16, 18, I will build the church on myself, not Peter. Okay, so that extra 7, now that brings up the next really important thing that you find from Genesis to Revelation that ends up being metered as a 56 because when you're 56 you're in your 57th year and of course we saw that here with Paul see here's your 56 um, it's really 57 at the end okay your age 56 until your 57th birthday but the minute you turn 56 you're in your 57th year that's the point okay Christ was supposed to die when he was 40. By the time David died and the church and the temple got started, there ended up being a screw up in the time timing of Solomon's building it. He was supposed to start building as soon as David died, but he waited three and a half years. I mean, it's either three or three and a half. I have to 
hone that down. Okay, so now it's not 54 years up to make up for the fact that in 2046, after Adam's fall, Moses matured, and therefore we got a 54-year credit because it's not happening in 2100, it's happening in 2046. That's not the number anymore. You have to add three and a half years to it. Hence, 54 becomes 57. And he's reminding them of that. This is the tribulational seven idea. Okay, he's reminding them, hi, this is the way it was supposed to be. The same trends are going to occur even though church is going to exist. Because there was no, the church wasn't supposed to exist. So church essentially inherits a historical trend that was supposed to apply had there been no church. Except it gets elongated from the 50 that it was supposed to be, wars and rumors of wars. You know, Daniel 9.26. Um, it gets, and the tribulation, of course, is, the re is after that's over. So the total ends up being 57, based on Christ having to be born, as it were, three and a half years early. When you keep coming up with a three-year difference, when you're crunching Bible numbers, just even if you're using only Bible numbers, you will come up with that difference, because there are two timelines. Christ was supposed to be born 4106 after Adam's fall. And whenever you convert to our BC and AD, you should be using that number. So add an a, add 4106 to your AD numbers, subtract 4106 from your BC numbers in order to convert between the Bible date and, you know, AD BC. The, it's a it's a genuine issue because Christ ends up having his birth ends up being three and a half years earlier than originally scheduled because of the time problem with David. All right? So that's why the 54 now becomes a credit needing to be 57. So he was supposed to die at age 40. Then there would be 57 more years. And then there would be the millennium. So he was supposed to be age 97 when the millennium occurred. And, and that would be his 98th year. The middle of it, in, as far as his age goes, the middle of it was supposed to be 94. So that was a possible rapture date. That's why Paul's plotting here. Okay? Christ himself is, is reminding them of all those doctrines when he parses the meter here, even though it's not seventh. Okay? Because, and here's the kicker, he doesn't die at age 40. He dies at age 33. Matthew, um, Daniel had laid out the 62 weeks, but that's after 62 weeks ends. Christ is talking at the beginning of the 62nd seven. And he doesn't die seven years later. He dies at the beginning of the 62nd week. So there is an extra seven that doesn't play when it was supposed to. And that's why seven years are spent on taking down the temple, as Paul is depicting it here, in, in you know, because he has to add up three more years, 66 to 73 in our AD equivalent. Okay, it was really 64 to 70, but that's okay. You know, it's it's some some scholars like to call it 63 to 73 because they realize the three-year differential, and so they just add three years. Okay, fine. But see, Paul is playing to that here. Okay, so Christ is reminding them of that, and he actually ends up dying seven years earlier. So instead of it being 57 prior to the millennium scheduled including the tribulation and the uh, last 50 years for harvesting the gentiles he actually died 64 years short 64 so what he's reminding them of is that hi yeah you know i'm i'm gonna die early this was the original schedule so it still has that same character in the time you're actually going to live and that's what you got to remember is the character of the time is being played out. 50 for harvesting the Gentiles, except it's going to be longer than 50 years now because Israel rejected Christ. He's, that's basically what he's explaining. He's not dead yet. And then the extra seven years for the tribulation will be last to play. Okay. So when you get to 134, which is, you know, equivalent here. This part 
is being matched to this part here in the, the Matthew text. Okay, you're reminded, see, because it could still be the rapture when Bar Kokhba rebellion occurs in 132 to 135 AD. That could be the rapture. And so one of the things that he's kind of helping you do is by using the numbers here, because everybody me memorized scripture by syllable counts, it was too heavy to carry the manuscripts. It's high. You know what? The map rapture might actually happen now. So don't be upset. Don't be fixated. This is characteristic of the last 57 years. And for all you know, today is one. Okay? It turns out that it's the Bar Kokhba Rebellion and time goes on. But, you know, at the time they didn't know. And, and you can't know because the criterion for the rapture is whether or not an, enough of church has matured in Christ. That's uh, uh, Ephesians, um, later on in Ephesians, Ephesians 4, 12, and 13. Till we've reached the stature of the fullness of the maturity of Christ. It's, that's, a, that's a joint thing. Well, I don't even know how mature I am, really, much less you. Okay, we, can't, we don't know who's Christian, let alone how mature they are as a Christian, that in aggregate over the thousands of years that have passed, are there enough of us to be a mosaic that represents the stature of the fullness of the maturity of Christ? Well, yeah, I don't know. So you can't predict the rapture because it's a maturation requirement of bodies, not time. At the same time, this rule about time that applied to Israel pre-church is kind of helpful to remember and makes you feel good. And again, Paul's giving you the specific text that you can remember. The grace of God, the grace of God, the grace of God, as you huff and puff your way through this period. Okay? So that was something I should have covered, but then In the next increment, we'll go through the meaning of 70, because that's kind of important, too. And just like the 21, it has its root in uh, Jacob. Coming up next increment.